And if I were to click on one, you'll see that I have three more galleries. So I have three galleries here, and each one of these uh, is the resource gallery. So this matches my tables, the social media gallery and the feedback. Hey everyone, this is my SharePoint questions, and today is my second video on gathering requirements. I went ahead and created an entire wireframe for my Power App. So after you gather requirements, the second thing you want to do is create a wireframe. And when I say a wireframe, that's a Power App that is not actually connected to any data. It's more of the UX design, how it's going to be. So as I'm building this wireframe, and I'm going to skip through a lot of steps. I know you guys don't want to see me click everything in here. But um, I'm able to go back to the customer and say, hey, you know, maybe we forgot a column. Uh, maybe we actually needed the, the zip code too, right? We can't just have address. Go back to the customer, give them a visual. Visuals always help with the customers. And I can say, hey, we need one more column. We've got to have the zip code. Another thing that I normally do in my wireframe is I add a little bit of color in there, right? So I'll take the company's uh, color scheme or their RGBA colors, and I'll make a gradient out of those colors and use it for my toolbar at the top. Uh, I know you can have a toolbar on the left or you can have one popping out, but this is just the simple way that I do it. You can always decide on other things you know, like a pop-out menu or a menu that comes out from the side later on. Right now, I just want to let the customer see some colors in there. Everybody likes seeing colors. So now that I have the first form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a collection. So I'm not actually going to write anywhere, but I'm going to get an icon. And I'm going to collect the data from each of these inputs, the data inputs and the text inputs and the dropdowns. So we're going to collect, and the collection name is going to be uh, COL event. And this collection is going to collect the event name, and that's the text event name dot text. And we're going to keep going. The building name is the text. And you notice as I've done this, I've already went out and named all of my uh, properties. I think it's very important. It makes it so, your life so much easier if you go in and you give your properties text address. It just makes your life so much easier. So now I have a collection. So now that we have collected uh, one form, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a gallery. And on this gallery, it's going to be vertical. And I'm going to use my collection that I just made. right? And so I have, actually have three uh, choices right now in my collection. So I'm going to get rid of the picture. And it's going to bring up a red X. So I'm just going to get rid of the red, red parts of my equations. And it brings it back up. And now I can make my collection. Now this is where a neat little trick comes in that I like to do. So what I like to do is actually create a button. So I'm going to create a button and it's going to take over the entire space actually. I want it to take up the entire space. And this button is actually going to have no color. It's going to be invisible. So the, the button is actually invisible but you can see when I highlight you know it's it's highlighting each one of those spots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this kind of look like SharePoint. I was a SharePoint developer before anything, or, or even Excel. That's what I'm going to make it look like. So, so what I've done here is I've created a gallery, and I made it a very thin gallery, and I almost made this look like Excel or SharePoint. And I've made it so there's a button, and I need to fix some of the colors. But when you hover over, one of the gallery selections, you notice that this is actually a button that I'm hovering over. It's a button with no border radius. So what I've done is I've added a new event button. And this new event button has two functionalities. It navigates you to the event screen and then it also sets a global variable to new. So when I click on new, is I've set up each of the default values of each of the properties. If the variable form is equal to new, then it's blank else it's equal to whatever we selected. 
So I'm actually gonna add this to each of the defaults of the event screen. So now, if I select on first event, it will bring up the old data. If I select new, it'll be blank, and we can create a new a new event. All right, so I've almost completely created my wireframe, and I know maybe everyone wanted to watch me create this wireframe, but in the end, I know no one would ever watch that YouTube video. It would be too long. It'd be, you know, 20, 30 minutes to an hour. So I can click on either one of these, and each one of these has their own data. So now that I have a wireframe, you notice that I have three galleries here. So I have one gallery that's my resources, I have one gallery that's my, my social media, and another gallery that's my complaints and praises. So in my dropdown, what I'm doing is on change, it's going to navigate to the, the correct screen. And what I wanted to do is set my, my variable form to new. That way when I select a resource and I select new, it makes everything blank. And if I were to select on the resource here, you would see I can then bring up the old information. If we go back and we look at the COVID outreach, you'll notice it's blank, right? Because that one-to-many relationship I'm using in the gallery. So in my galleries, I actually have a filter. And this filter is saying, hey, I want you to load the, the collection resource collection, but only when the gallery event name is equal to my event name. So you'll notice that I have my event name up here. And so I have no data in my events right now. So if we go to social media and I create a Facebook event, I'll just put some random data in there. You'll notice when I save, this Facebook number of views is actually only tied to the COVID outreach. It's not tied to any new, new event. So if I were to do a new event, you notice it's not tied to any of that. And so I would create this wireframe and obviously it is not 100% done. This is not uh, the finish of my app, but this is something I would hand off to the customer and I'll say, hey, what do you think about this? Uh, do you like the colors? Uh, this way we can kind of work in parallel and the app can be done faster. So I just want to say that a wireframe is very important. I know maybe someone wanted to watch me create everything, but I think that would be, you know, a, a 40 hour power app or maybe a two hour power app and no one wants to watch me just create the whole time but uh, I do have um, a lot of the data in here a, a nice little wireframe uh, you can see that each of the forms is here and I just want to extend the importance of creating a wireframe before you create your data tables uh, this is going to allow you to cut out some of the fields that maybe you don't want as you can see I, I cut out two of the fields I don't need type of praise and praise because it's based off the type here. Um, I added a ratings column and I also added a zip code and an event type. Another thing I was missing actually is the event name. So I actually need the event name on each one of these. Although I have the event ID, I, I want to keep the event name too. So now I've updated my my requirements gathering uh, columns here it now matches my my power app and so I'm, I'm ready to move forward I'm ready for the database team SharePoint administrator team to create the data tables behind this uh, for me I would probably do this in SQL uh, that's my preference I prefer SQL um, but for the demonstration purposes here I'm gonna do my next video in SharePoint uh, SharePoint has no license requirement issues. And so uh, thank you guys for watching. If you keep watching, I'm going to next show you how to design the tables in SharePoint. That'll be my next video. Thank you guys for watching.